The purpose of this video, honestly, is just to share and highlight the importance of therapy, um, the benefits that it has, and also a little bit of my personal journey when it comes to therapy. I think it's so beautiful because I think in the past there were so many negative stigmas around the topic of therapy and people actually seeking therapy and getting therapy. And now as people are starting to be more open and vulnerable about their experiences, it's becoming more widespread and not so much of a taboo topic anymore. But I still know a lot of people who are still a little bit apprehensive about do I really need therapy? Um, a little bit apprehensive when it comes to taking the first step. And so today I'm going to help out with some tips on how to find the right therapist but where are my manners welcome welcome back to my channel thank you guys so much for watching today's video today we are talking about healthier mental habits and we are diving into the topic of therapy first we're going to go into the benefits of therapy then three tips to help you find the right therapist and then we're going to go into a little bit of my personal journey i'll share some important things to know and also some of my favorite quotes from people who have talked about their experience and their journey with therapy some of the benefits of therapy and by no means is this list all conclusive is it all in these are just a few of the benefits of therapy that I have seen myself and that I have seen more widespread that a lot of people have highlighted on their journey. But I guess before we even get into that, what is therapy? When I say therapy, what am I talking about? So specifically when I am referring to therapy, I am talking about sitting down with someone who is licensed to provide mental health counseling. So that can come in the form of a psychologist, a psychiatrist, or even a licensed clinical social worker. In this video, I am not referring to life coaches and no shade against life coaches because I think they are amazing too. So getting back to some of the benefits. Some of the benefits of therapy include improved coping skills, emotional support, personal growth, relationship improvement, behavioral changes, mental health management, gaining a better understanding of self, and unlearning old habits and thoughts and patterns, and relearning healthier ones that fit the narrative of who you are and who you desire to be. So let's talk about the three tips on finding the right therapist. I think a lot of times we talk about getting therapy, and I think a lot of people get stuck like, how do I even start this process? So I'm going to help you with that today. Now, I will say when I first started therapy back in August of 2021 I got really lucky and was able to find someone that I clicked with really quickly and it was kind of like magic from there I stayed with her for two years but due to insurance changes on my part she was no longer in network and so then we had to part ways and we'll talk about insurance in just a little bit and honestly, after two years, I felt like I was in a really good place. I felt like I had had my feet on solid ground. And so I didn't immediately seek out another therapist. So from about the time of August of 2020, three until January of 2024. This year, I told myself, that, I think it was like December, I told myself I wanted to get back in therapy. Um, I'll go into a little bit more why I wanted to start the journey again, um, but I wanted to get back into therapy this year. And so in January, I started to kind of do some research. And let me tell you, it was not as easy this time around to find the right therapist for me, but I finally found a really great fit and I'm here to show you how. So the first thing is, where do you even begin to look for a therapist? I know sometimes we see ads here on YouTube for things like BetterHelp. We see ads on Instagram. I'm sure we even see see TV commercial ads for therapy now. But what I personally did was I started with this website that I used last time, 2021, when I was looking. I started there. I started on a website called Psychology Today. And that's psychologytoday.com. All of the websites, references, resources that I talk about today, I will include in the description box. So Psychology Today is where I started. I like Psychology Today because it gives you, um, I like seeing pictures of people. So it gives you a picture most times, nine times out of 10. It'll show you a picture of the therapist that you're considering. It'll give you a little bit of their background, what their specialty areas are, and a little bit more. It just gives you a kind of like a, 
It's kind of like their bio. And for me, that was really helpful. And when I was talking about the ads, I mentioned BetterHelp. I think that's a good resource for a place to start. There's also Therapy for Black Girls. They have a really good directory of therapists on their site. If you're looking to connect to some therapists through Instagram, we use social media for everything. So it's like use it to better ourselves too. There is an Instagram page called The Black Girl Doctor. They are a team of licensed mental health experts. So I would definitely check them out as well. And then two more ways to find a therapist that some people may not necessarily know about are number one, word of mouth recommendations. Sometimes it does take getting to that vulnerable spot to let people know that you're even looking for a therapist. But for me, getting a word of mouth recommendation or referral from someone that I trust, that I care about, that I respect, um, holds a lot of weight for me. So for sure, I would take that into consideration. And the second thing is look at your insurance network. Look and see who's in your direct that's in network, that'll be a cost effective option. Now I will insert this in here too. That is if your insurance actually covers any mental health benefits. Now I'll be honest, I am in my mid thirties and I've never once even considered like choosing an insurance, one insurance option over another due to mental health benefits. It's something I've never really looked into in the past. So when I started looking in 2021, I was like, I don't even know if my insurance covers anything. Um, and so I had to do a little research and education on that part. And for me, it was as easy as reaching out to our HR department. We actually have a benefits department and they were able to answer a lot of questions for me and point me in the right direction. And that kind of segues nicely into tip number two. Really do look to see if you have insurance benefits that cover mental health therapy um, like I said it's not something that I ever looked for in the past but it is something that I will definitely take into consideration moving forward and have taken into consideration moving forward and one of the key things to be mindful of here is when your insurance provides a directory of providers who are in network it is still so important not to just go ahead and find somebody that you think you might click with and book an appointment with them you want to make sure that you email or call their office first to verify that they still accept your insurance I've had instances in the past where I see a really great provider on the directory and I'm like hey you know I saw that you guys are in network they'll say oh you know give me your insurance information and they're like we're actually not in network those things kind of ebb and flow throughout the course of the year I thought it would be something where the changes would take effect you know in October during like open enrollment but my therapist from the past that I had for two years my insurance benefits actually changed in like the summertime out of the blue. So be sure to verify, have them verify your insurance before you start booking an appointment so that you know what your cost is per session. And one of the questions that I would ask whether you have insurance or not is how much will my sessions be? How much is the cost per session? And depending on what their response is, depending on what your budget for therapy is, I would also look into things like asking them, about any sliding scale payment schedules that they may have as well as any payment plan options that they may have. Now just being transparent here because I want you guys to have some tangible knowledge here. There are a lot of therapy sessions out there where they can range in cost typically between $100 to $200. And I've typically seen a lot of $130 to about $150 per session. Each session is typically 50 minutes. I've seen some that are 60 minutes, but typically they're about 50 minutes long. Now in 2021, when I was looking for therapy, I had no clue what the average price range was, but I know I was looking to have therapy on a weekly basis. And I also know that the thought of paying $600 per month for therapy was not something that I was interested in and that's just me being very honest and transparent had my insurance not covered it I still think I would have probably done a minimum of two sessions per month so every other week um, because I knew I was in a space where I really needed some therapy now I got really fortunate and I really do just think that it was God saying like I know that you need this you know that you need this I'm gonna work something out in your favor and so at the time my insurance covered the majority of my costs. Um, so the therapist that I was seeing at the time, her cost per session was $150. And I only had to pay $10 per session. So I was able to go to therapy every week um, for two years, and I was only paying $40 a month. Now I know that that's not going to be everybody's story, but it's just an encouragement to tell you 
go and look and see what your coverage is. I know some people have it to where their insurance company will pay for a certain amount of sessions per year. So see what the specifics are for you. You may be pleasantly surprised. And even if it only covers a certain number of sessions per year, take advantage of that. We're paying for these benefits. They're paying us in exchange for us using these benefits. So use the benefits that you have. At least educate yourself on if you have them. Now, like I said, my insurance did change. And so I had to call and, you know, have the same conversation like hey what are my mental health benefits now and fortunately it didn't it did go up but it didn't go up too much now I pay about $20 per session um, but I'm only doing therapy now every other week so I'm still only paying $40 a month um, and I think that's a good cadence for me at this point in time so I will say it again if you have it look into it educate yourself on what your benefits are and use it and tip number three I would say to know your filters going in at least have some rough idea of what your filters are. And what I mean by that is, do you have a preference for in-person visits versus virtual visits? For myself personally, um, it was around the time of the pandemic. And so I think all that was really available were virtual sessions, but it worked so beautiful for me that that's all I kind of lean towards now. Back then, um, the two years that I had therapy prior, I was having therapy sessions in my car um, as I waited to pick my son up um, in the parking lot of the grocery store, um, in the parking lot in front of my house if a session was starting and I knew I wasn't going to make it inside the house in time. Um, so yeah, I've had therapy in some very interesting places because it was virtual. I can kind of do it from anywhere that I have good connectivity. Also, something else to think about is, do you prefer a male or a female therapist? In Initially, my preference was I only want to have a female therapist, especially at the time um, in the past when I took it. Um, this time around, I was open to a little bit more things. Um, I was open to a male therapist, at least to have a consultation. Um, it still ended up that I am with a female therapist, but I am happy with my choice that I've made right now. I personally think that sometimes stretching the limits of what we're comfortable with can be really helpful um, just because we're getting the lens of someone who doesn't have the same you know, maybe experiences or understandings that we do. And so it may encourage us to vocalize ourselves and understand ourselves and explain things a little bit more thoroughly. And so, yeah, I, I like to stretch myself. I don't like to get into a comfort zone, um, but that's just, that's just not how the cookie crumbled this time around. But I am open to it. Another thing to take into consideration that most people probably don't talk about, but is there a certain race that you're comfortable working with? Um, are you only comfortable working with someone of the same background as you? If so, use that in your filters. Don't narrow your searches so much um, because I do think a helpful therapist comes in a wide variety of um, genders, backgrounds, etc. If you are more fluent in another language, that's something to take into consideration as a filter as well. Another thing that you may want to filter is if you want the option of your therapist to be able to prescribe medication versus not. That's a big one because not everybody can prescribe medication um, like antidepressants or anxiolytics. So that's something that you you want to take into consideration when you're doing your search. Something that I took into consideration is how many years of experience that a certain therapist have. Um, I don't think there's anything against someone who has a year or two of experience. They could be amazing, but I at least want to know what your experience level is. I do think that more seasoned therapists, in my opinion, and my experience um, has worked out better for me, someone that's had tenure in the game. And so, yeah, both of the therapists that I've worked with personally have been practicing for at least 10 years. And lastly, you want to take into consideration what you're specifically looking for treatment for, or therapy for, to talk through. Um, so if you're looking specifically for ADHD management, there you on psychology today, you can actually filter by what service or area of concern you're wanting to work on. So whether it's life transitions, ADHD management, um, divorce or family counseling, parenting, anxiety and depression, whatever the case may be, um, if you go to psychology today, you can definitely filter it by that. Um, and I think that that's really helpful. So now we're going to talk about the three important tips that I want you to make sure that you have an understanding of because I do think that it makes it I think having the awareness helps you with the transition into therapy. Number one being have the understanding and the awareness that the work, the work 
of self and the work of healing and the work of discovery is not an overnight process. As the saying goes, it is a marathon, not a sprint. So commit to the process and understand that every individual person's duration is going to vary. I personally say for people who are just starting out, a minimum of about 10 to 12 sessions, I think you can get a good understanding of things where it's like you can make an educated decision on if you need to continue or if you feel like you've made enough progress for the time being. There are some ideas out there floating around where you know they just do one or two sessions. It takes time to build rapport with a therapist and depending on on where you are in your journey, depending on what areas of concern you're working on, depending on what's going on in your life, um, all of those things, all of those different factors will play a role in your duration and how long that you're going to be in therapy. But it's also important to understand you can stop whenever you want to. You can pause if you feel like this is getting too heavy or I don't really feel like I'm seeing a big benefit from it. You are in control of when you start and stop. Tip number two may seem like something that I shouldn't have to state but I I will state it because you'd be surprised tip number two is to be honest with your therapist I'm gonna say it again be honest with your therapist okay they can only help you if you are being honest as honest as you know how to be and that requires a certain level of vulnerability and yes it can feel a little cringe it can feel a little bit awkward to tell this stranger all of your deepest darkest secrets or thoughts and experiences but it is worth it for me don't cheat yourself out of the process by trying to hide things I will say work your way up to a level where you feel comfortable diving a little bit deeper and getting more comfortable but don't cheat yourself out of the process and tip number three one of the things that I really 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 like to emphasize is finding the right therapist can be a little bit like dating and now you may not know this but I am divorced and I have re-entered the dating pool so I understand a little bit more about what the dating pool is like now Um, (laughs) and that's a topic for another day but finding the right therapist can be a little bit like dating I encourage people to set up consultations with two to three therapists that they're interested in and go on a first date have that consultation with them most consultations will be free um, or at a reduced price um, but some of them do charge for a full session fee so be mindful to ask that information as well Typically, a consultation is much shorter. It's typically not a 50-minute session. Um, Typically, they range from about 15 to 30 minutes. And during these consultations, ask your questions. Let them ask questions and just kind of get a feel for the vibe between the two of you. Because one thing that I've learned this second time around in trying to find a therapist is somebody can have great reviews, a great bio, and then you guys get in front of each other in person or virtually, and you're just like, ah, I wasn't feeling it. <laughs> I've had that happen. Now, like I said, this time around, I wanted to really stretch outside of my comfort zone a little bit. So even if I didn't really feel it um, during the consultation, I would still book a session with them, especially because I'm only paying $20 per session, just to see how one to two sessions go. Sometimes it may be a little bit of nervousness on my end um, because it's somebody new, because I'm like, how is this going to work? How is this going to flow? Are we a good fit? I'm an overthinker. So I'm just like, is this the right person for me? So I typically will book one to two sessions to see how things flow and make a decision on whether or not I want to continue with them. But I will say sometimes you will hit the sweet spot because back in 2021, when I had a consultation with my therapist, from that consultation, I knew this was a good fit and we soared from there. Like I said, we were together for two years. And so I'm going to go into a little bit of my personal story when it comes to how I even started getting into therapy, what made me seek out therapy in the first place. Um, There's a whole video on it and I will link that in the description box if you want to go a little bit more in detail. Um, But essentially I had a lot of really challenging life transitions happen back to back to back to back and I felt like I was drowning and Nobody, I don't think anyone ever even really recommended that I get therapy. I think it was a decision that I came to on my own because I was really struggling from one day to the next and I knew I needed to do something. And so for me, I had been venting to family and friends and I was like, no, I need something um, more specifically tailored and I need 
more guided direction from someone who is trained to handle the magnitude of the things that I was dealing with at the time. As you guys can tell by my name, I am a doctor of nursing practice. I work in the healthcare field. One of the first things was the pandemic. The pandemic was really um, stressful for me mentally, still having to show up for work. Um, I had a one year old when the pandemic started. And so there was a lot of fear around, am I gonna bring something home to him? You know, if I end up in the hospital, what's gonna happen? Most of my family lives out of state so it's just like you know who's gonna be there for me in my time of need if something were to happen because I work with a very high risk population in addition to that I also started my divorce process during the pandemic so you can only imagine the weight of those two things on top of that I was finishing my DMP school so doctor of nursing practice school um, I was in my last semester um, yes I was in my last semester so <laughs> Um, as I think about it now, I'm just like, it always baffles me because I'm like, I really was going through it. Um, so finishing up school in my last semester, um, a new mom to a one year old, just finishing my breastfeeding journey, um, going through the divorce, going through the pandemic, the weight of all of that was really heavy and I never felt any shame when it came to seeking out therapy. I knew it would only be something that would be for my benefit. And so I was excited to do it. My only other experience with counseling therapy before um, when I was married, I think we did like two sessions of counseling before um, at very separate times. And so nothing ever consistent. Um, but I was excited to, to kind of dig in deep and Honestly, I was excited to not feel like I was drowning anymore. And so I just want to say to anyone watching this video, if you feel like you have been carrying heaviness, um, if you feel like life has been really unfair and unkind to you and it's been that way for some time if you feel like nobody gets you if you feel like you don't have a strong support system if you feel like you're navigating through life alone if you feel like you can't breathe if you feel like it's hard to sleep at night and feel rested if you feel like you're walking around with a cloud over your head at all times i really really highly encourage that you seek out therapy it is something that i do believe quite literally saved me um, and i do not mean that i want to be very clear i do not mean that in the way of me wanting to take my life um but I do feel like I was slipping into a bout of depression and I do think that had it not been for therapy, um, I probably would have gotten there. And so I want to end this video um, just letting you know, number one, that you're not alone. And I found some really great quotes from different celebrities and famous figures that have expressed their gratitude towards therapy that I think may resonate with somebody that's watching. I'm reading from my laptop, so that's why I'm looking down. The first quote is from J.K. Rowling, a very famous author. And she says, I think the most important thing to do if you're suffering in any way is to reach out. I resonate with that so much because I think sometimes we think, at least I thought, I'll speak for myself, I haven't gone through like abuse. I haven't gone through like some of the really traumatic things that we hear about in life. I'm like, my life is not that. Um, and so I think we compare it to like, well, it's not that bad. I should be able to handle this. I love that she says, if you're suffering in any way, no matter how small or big, it is important to reach out. The next quote is from Beyonce and she says, talking about how I feel has helped me let go of some of the pressure and be more present. I resonated with that because sometimes it just feels heavy and it does feel like a weight, like a pressure and you do need to let some of that go. Something that I think I'm going to throw in here is as of recently, now granted, I've been someone who's done therapy for two years, found a lot of great insights and benefits to it. This time around, we're digging back to my past and that has been rocky because one thing I realized is that I didn't really realize even after the two years of therapy, how much weight I was still holding just from like life experiences, um, learned habits from the past and as we've started working through some of those things, it's exhausting, number one, I will be very honest. It is, it can be very exhausting, but 
I had this light bulb moment one day where it was like, now that I'm feeling lighter, I didn't even realize how heavy the things were that I was carrying. It just felt normal to carry these things. And so now that I'm not carrying some of the things anymore, I feel lighter. And even though I feel lighter and healthier in that regard, it feels uncomfortable. So it's still taking some getting used to, so to speak. Quote number three is from Brad Pitt. And he says very energetically, I love therapy. I love it. I went through two therapists to get to the right one. And I liked that one just to highlight the fact that you may not connect with the right therapist on the first try, on the second try, on the third try. But that is not something that should deter you from getting therapy. I remember a therapist that I love. Her name is Dr. Spirit. I'll link her Instagram handle here on the screen. She is amazing. I, I want to work with her one day and I reached out to her this time around um, to see if I could work with her as a therapist. Um, but she doesn't accept my insurance. And like I said before, I'm not paying $150 per session um, when I'm used to paying 10 to $20. But if you have the means to do it, I would definitely recommend her or anybody that she recommends. However, I digress. I remember asking her one day, does everybody need therapy? I just wondered like, even people who have a good balance in life, does everybody need therapy? And her response to me was, everybody deserves therapy. And I loved that because it's not about a need. You deserve to have a space where you can go and talk and heal and get unbiased opinions and recommendations and guidance and further insight into the things that you can't see. One of the things that I love about therapy is Often we have blinders to ourselves and it is not until somebody else puts patterns together and puts pieces together, they can reflect that back to you. That's one of the best things that I've experienced in therapy. Two more quotes. The next one is from Jay-Z and he says, we have to evolve as human beings. We have to take care of our mental health. And I love that. I think a lot of times mental health gets put on the back burner or lower on the totem pole. But honestly, it should be at the top of the totem pole because when your mental health is intact everything else can flourish from there it really does affect every single area of your life and the last quote but not the least is from bruce springsteen he says therapy has been great for me it helped me put the pieces of the puzzle together and that is another great thing that resonated with me you start to see how things are connected in your life you start to see this is where that came from do i want to carry that with me how do i want to change it do i want to let it go completely there's a lot of discovery there's a lot of learning and unlearning and relearning um so it's a process and some people have said i've heard people say that they've been in therapy for years and it's almost like what are you talking about for years depending on what you're going through in life things are coming up and so for me i was in therapy for two years i never thought that i had would have been in therapy that long i was thinking i don't know get me through the divorce um and then i can kind of navigate on my own but all of these things kept popping up and happening and so it's like look we were doing good over here this just popped up it kind of threw me off track I feel like I'm spiraling again let's work through it let's navigate these things as they pop up so depending on the lifestyle that you have depending on the amount of there's some things I, I, I'll say this there are things that you don't know are affecting you um, that can be uncovered in therapy and depending on how deep those things go it can take you quite some time to process them and work through them and come out on the other side so once again to end this video i am i am telling you i am someone who is the recipient of having therapy someone who is currently in therapy and people always tell me like you seem like you have so like it all together and it's like even though I've gone through this really challenging time period in my life and I'm no longer in that space there are still things that I can need to work on and embrace and so I like to think of myself as a lifelong learner I am a student of life and of myself and so for me I am a huge proponent of therapy I 
I take my hat off to all of the therapists out there doing really impactful work. Like it does not go unnoticed. So if anybody out there is a therapist who's watching this, thank you. And if you have any questions about therapy, if you want to ask me them more privately, you can email me. I'll put my email here on the screen. It's also in the description box. But feel free to let me know in the comments if you've ever considered therapy, if you've had therapy and what your experience was like. Um, do you recommend it or not? And and yeah, like I said, if there are any questions that you may have that I didn't touch on, feel free to ask me. I will definitely get back to you. I appreciate you guys for watching today's video. I wanted to make sure to make this video and drop it, release it in the month of May because this is Mental Health Awareness Month. And so, yes, thank you guys. If you like this video, if you found it valuable to you, if you found some significance in there, if it helps convince you a little bit more to actually seek out therapy, definitely don't forget to subscribe to my channel. That really helps me as a new YouTuber to grow. Also, don't forget to like this video, drop a comment below and share it with someone that you may think can benefit from it. As always, until the next video, take care.